Hi, my name is Leonard Ng, and this is No Wafa. Today we'll be covering the issue of winding up or how to end a company. Now, as we all know, we all know how to set up a company, right? However, a company is an entity that can survive almost forever, right? So the key question over here is how do we end a company? There are actually two types of dissolution of a company under the Companies Act, namely striking off and two, winding up. The process of striking off is pretty straightforward and is cost effective if the company is able to fulfill the requirements of striking off, which our Miss Wafa will deal with later. On the other hand, when it comes to winding up, now winding up is a more lengthy process and it requires higher costs and expenses as compared to winding up, right, if it cannot meet the requirement or in the event if the debt of the company cannot be paid. Okay, so when it comes to striking off, Section 549 of the Companies Act 2016 allows the registrar to exercise his power to strike off a company of the register in the situations where, first, the company is not carrying on business in the future or is not in operation for more than 12 months. The second, the company has no assets and liabilities including outstanding charges in the register of charges. The company has insufficient fund to pay for winding up process and when the company has no outstanding charges in the register of charges. Also, the company has no outstanding penalties or offer of compounds under the Companies Act and the company has no outstanding tax or other liabilities with any government department or agency. Next, the information of the company with the registrar is up to date and the company is not involved in any legal proceeding within or outside of Malaysia. The company has not made any return of capital to the shareholders the company is not a holding company and the company is not a guaranteed corporation. So to carry out the striking of procedure, the applicant must pay the for application fees of RM100 ringgit and issue a covering letter where the directors of the company shall state the reasons for such application. The applicant must provide his statement which is to be signed by the directors. The resolution of majority shareholders must be shown and the applicant must prove that the latest company's management accounts or audited financial sta statements. The applicant must also make sure that there are waiver letters from creditors which are to be completely signed by all parties involved and the company printout must be proven as well. Next is the process of winding up. Now, what as well? As far as winding up is concerned, compulsory winding up is a process where the company is unable to pay its debt and the petition the court to have the company wound up is also known as court winding up. Right? Usually it's in pursuit of money which is owed to the particular creditors itself and most of the time it's in the form of a judgment debt. Now, apart from compulsory winding up, there is also voluntary winding up. Voluntary winding up can be done by either the members or the creditors. Voluntary winding up by the members is in a situation where the company is still solvent and is able to meet the liability of to, to pay all the debts later. Whereas for creditors, a voluntary winding up is a situation where the, company, the business of the company is insolvent and it's no longer viable. Now, the procedure for compulsory winding up, also known as the courts winding up, is quite straightforward. One, usually you will get your lawyer to serve a notice of demand under Section 465 of the Companies Act on the company in order to demand for settlement of the outstanding debt. Two, we then file in the necessary legal documents in the form of winding up petition and in the event, if the earlier notice which was sent, the, uh, the, and there's no response to that, and the company fails to settle the debt as stipulated in the notice itself, then there is a presumption that the company is unable to pay its debt. Then the court will then ar arrange a date for hearing, and also the court can then run the winding up order. 
Now, once the one-year order is granted, a liquidator will be appointed where he or she, the liquidator, will take over the affairs of the company and proceed with the winding up proceeding. Now, as for creditors winding up, right? Now, creditors winding up, first, what the creditors can do is the creditors can propose a resolution for winding up. Two, a written notice can then be sent to all the creditors where they be given seven days before the commencement of the creditors meeting. Three, there will be an advertisement of the winding up notice in a widely circulated newspaper in Malaysia, in, in both Malay and also in English. Four, a time and place will then be fixed for the creditors meeting where the attendees will then decide on the issue of appointment of liquidator and appointment of a committee of inspection if it's so required. Five, then a copy of the resolution for winding up will be lodged with the company's commission in Malaysia within seven days from the date of resolution was, is passed. And six, a copy of the resolution of the, of the winding up is then posted in a widely circulated newspaper in Malaysia, English and Malay, right? 10 days from the date of passing of the resolution. And then number seven, the liquidator will then again Right, just like the, in a compulsory winding up, take over the affairs of the company and proceed with the winding up. Right, members voluntary winding up. It's more straightforward. Right, number one, a resolution of winding up has to be passed by the members of the company. Now, before you go for members voluntary winding up, there must be a written declaration of solvency prepared and executed by the board of directors. Right. Uh, usually, there will be uh, one of the managing directors who will, will sign off uh, that resolution itself. And number three, members of the company will then appoint a liquidator. And four, you will launch a declaration. There will be a declaration of solvency as we have dealt with earlier. A, a member's voluntary winding up is in a situation where the company is still solvent. So there should be a declaration of solvency launched with the company's commission in Malaysia. And then, Lastly, liquidator will take over the affairs of the company and proceed with the winding up. So in conclusion, right, with all the earlier presentation, right, it, it can be observed that the, the easiest way to end a company is actually striking off. Right? Then, uh, what for? So the significant effect of striking off a company is that the company will dissolve and cease to exist. However, according to Section 554 of the Companies Act, the liability of every director or officer and member of the company still continues and may be enforced as if the company still exists. The same goes to a company that is in winding up. It will cease to operate and the liquidator will come in and take over all the affairs of the company. Thank you, your patience and listening to our presentation today. If you have any inquiry, please do not hesitate to contact me via the email which will be stated below. Thank you very much.